Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Ella and today I've got a pretty fun video for you guys. So you probably didn't know it when you clicked into this video, but today you guys are going to be witnessing a fight. But don't worry, this fight will be a very civil one. There will be no bloodshed, so you don't have to click away. <laughs> All right, let's meet our contenders, shall we? So contender number one is the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Okay, I have to be careful. Just just give me a second. So our first contender is actually almost the highest spec laptop made by Apple. I think it's like the second highest spec. So yeah, this little guy, well actually big guy is quite powerful. But our second contender is also very strong. So let's meet the MacBook Air. Yes, the MacBook Air. You guys are probably like, what? The 16 inch MacBook Pro versus the MacBook Air? Yes, because the MacBook Pro is on Intel while the MacBook Air is actually on the new M1 chip. And that's why these two can even be competitors in the first place. This MacBook Air is actually the lowest spec MacBook Air. So this is the lowest spec laptop that Apple makes while this is like the second highest spec laptop that Apple makes. And if it weren't for the M1 chip inside of this laptop, then uh, let me just tell you, like one second into this fight, the MacBook Pro will completely annihilate the MacBook Air. But since it has the M1 chip, it's going to be different. They are going to have a good fight in the ring today. Well, imaginary ring. All right, so the rules that I made up for this fight is that they have 10 tasks to do and whoever does more tasks better wins. Unless, of course, there's a tie because 10 is an even number, but let's just hope that doesn't happen. Okay, so round one is going to be a test of their CPU. I had both of them run Geekbench 5. And the conclusion for the CPU, which actually really shocked me the first time that I saw these numbers, is that the MacBook Air wins! Yay! Woo! <laughs> okay, all right. Shouldn't get too excited because that's only round one. So now let's move on to round two which is going to be a test of their GPU. And again, I ran these benchmarks in Geekbench 5. Okay, so unfortunately the Air couldn't snag both the CPU and the GPU. Also guys, I just want to quickly point out that the MacBook Pro essentially has two GPUs, whereas the M1 MacBook Air only has one. The MacBook Pro has both the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M and the Intel UHD Graphics 630. The MacBook Pro does win for the GPU, yay, but a solid fight for the Air so far. Now we are at round three and they are one for one each. So uh, we'll see who takes the lead by the end of this. So round three is to render a 4K 30p video, which is the type of video that I make. I film all my videos in 4K now and whichever one renders out a 4K 30p video faster will be the winner of this round. Okay, so I had both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro render out a 4K video that's about seven to eight minutes long. These two videos aren't the same, however, However, they were filmed on the same camera and I also made sure that they had a similar amount of overlays and effects. So I know this isn't the most scientific investigation, but I would say it is good enough. All right, so it looks like the pro is taking a little bit of a lead by rendering out the 4K 30p video faster than the Air. And the fourth round is to compile some code in Xcode. Whichever one compiles it faster wins. 
Okay, so I didn't run this test myself because I've never used Xcode before and I also don't have a project that I can test on, but instead I found this really good video by Dave2D on YouTube. I will have the original video linked down below. Here is a summary of different Xcode build times for different Macs, and as you guys can see, the M1 MacBook Air has a fresh build time of 45 seconds and an incremental build time of 16 seconds, while the 16-inch MacBook Pro has a fresh build time of 61 seconds and an incremental build time of 19 seconds. And yes, I know that the MY MacBook Air in this chart has 16 gigs of RAM while the model that I have only has 8 gigs of RAM. However, overall, you can still see that Xcode has fantastic performance on the M1 chip. Okay, so it seems like the air is catching up. We are now 2 for 2. Oh my gosh, guys, this is going to be a tight fight, okay? <laughs> So the air wins for Xcode compile time, but what about Android compile time? Because of course we can't forget about Android. Let's take a look at their compile times. The first time I tried building this Android project on the MacBook Air, it took 4 minutes and 25 seconds, which is really, really long. However, from the second time on, the incremental build time was much more reasonable at just a few seconds, and this time specifically, it took just 5 seconds. And on the MacBook Pro, the first time I tried building the same Android project, it took 54 seconds, and then the times after that, it was basically instantaneous at just 1 second. Okay, so the the Air snagged the trophy for Xcode, however, the MacBook Pro still wins for Android Studio, and the reason might be because Xcode is currently optimized for the M1 chip. It is an app made by Apple, so of course it would be, but Android Studio, as of right now, is currently not native to ARM, but instead it has to run through an emulator, so that might have caused the extra time in compilation. But hopefully in the future, when Android Studio becomes native to ARM, then its compile time will be just as fast, if not faster, on the M1 MacBook Air than on the MacBook Pro. Okay, and the next round is a bit of a more difficult round, and it is streaming at 1080p. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> okay, so this MacBook Air really cannot be used for streaming. This is a very simple webcam stream at 720p. However, after just 20 minutes of streaming, it started to lag really hard and it never recovered. I would say the MY MacBook Air just really cannot be used for streaming. And the MacBook Pro has much better performance in terms of streaming compared to the MacBook Air. This is a camera stream at 1080p, and after many times of trying to stream from my MacBook Pro, I have come to the conclusion that if I just stream the camera feed, then my stream performs fine, there is very little lag. However, if I stream anything else in addition to just my camera feed, whether that's a web page or a game, then my stream will start to lag. So yeah, definitely the MacBook Pro isn't a very suitable machine for streaming either. If you want to stream, go get a PC. I am planning on building a PC myself soon. And half the time, actually no, like 75% of the time, I have no idea what's going on. I like spend so long on it, just like dropping things here and there, testing it out, but having no idea what I'm doing. And it's terrible. I hate the labs. I like the class. Hate the labs. Okay, so as for streaming, I have to give the win to the MacBook Pro only because the MacBook Air's performance was really just abysmal. The MacBook Pro really isn't great at streaming either. Like, trust me, I've struggled so much with the MacBook Pro trying to get it to not overheat while I stream, and um, it's really hard. Now I've bought some like heat sinks and fans, and it's a little bit better. But like, really, the MacBook Pro isn't well suited for streaming. I do plan on building a PC sometime in the future for like streaming and gaming, but uh, yeah. Both of them just kind of suck for streaming, but the MacBook Air sucks even more, so the win goes to the MacBook Pro. <laughs> Okay, and for round seven is to boot camp into Windows. And you guys are probably wondering like, why is that even a round? And the reason is because um, sometimes like, there may be some kind of application that will only run on Windows. So in that case, it becomes important to be able to boot camp into Windows. And also, of course, there are many games that are only available on Windows. So if you want to play like Valorant or the Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, you need to go into Windows for that. And for this round, let's see what the results are.
Okay, so I have to say this round is uh, kind of a troll round because, well, the MacBook Pro can boot into Windows and the MacBook Air cannot. So this is like a binary round. And I have to say not being able to boot camp into Windows, in my opinion, is definitely a pretty significant detriment to the MacBook Air just because, again, like there are some applications that are Windows exclusive and with the MacBook Air, like you just don't have that option. Okay, and now we are at round eight, and this round is going to be which one can let me play Among Us? So on all of the new M1 MacBooks, Among Us is actually available as an app, which is really great, and it makes playing Among Us on the Mac very convenient. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a visual representation of what I have to do if I want to play Among Us on the MacBook Pro. So first, I have to restart my computer in order to boot camp into Windows, and then I click on the Among Us logo to open it. Sometimes it opens instantaneously, sometimes it freezes up and takes a bit, and other times it prompts me to log into Steam. But overall, trying to play Among Us on the MacBook Pro is definitely not as straightforward as playing Among Us on the MacBook Air. Okay, so both of them can let me play Among Us. However, I'm going to give the win to the Air because it is so much easier to launch Among Us on the MacBook Air than on the MacBook Pro. On the Air, I can just open up the application and play it while on the MacBook Pro, I do have to like restart my computer, boot camp into Windows, wait for Steam to load, which can sometimes take forever, and then finally play Among Us. So it's definitely faster to play Among Us on the MacBook Air. And for round nine, we are going to look at the Octane scores for the two MacBooks. Octane measures web responsiveness, so how fast your browser loads. So originally, I ran Octane on both Safari and Chrome on the M1 MacBook Air. However, in this video, I'm only going to include the Octane score from Safari, just because later on I realized that the Chrome version that I had was non-native, and right now there is an available version of Chrome that is native to ARM, so that's why I just decided to not include the Octane score for Chrome in this video because I think it is no longer relevant. And the winner of round 9 is the M1 MacBook Air with a very impressive Octane score of 62,425. Okay, and for the very last round, round 10, I am going to test their ability to run games. And this is what happened when I tried loading CSGO on the M1 MacBook Air. It just gave me this black screen. I even restarted my computer and tried reloading CSGO and this was the same result. So yeah, I don't think you can play CSGO on the M1 MacBook Air. However, I could be wrong because I did see this list of all of the games that can be played on the M1 MacBook Air. MacBook Air and CSGO is on there, so I'm not sure if CSGO got an update between the time that I filmed this video and now when I'm sitting down to edit, so yeah. But if you're curious, you can go check out this list that summarizes all of the games that are available on the M1 Max. I will have this list linked down below. On the MacBook Pro, because I have the ability to boot camp into Windows, there is a wide variety of games that I can play, including Valorant and the Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is what you guys are seeing right now. This has become my favorite game of all time. It is such a cool game. It basically allows me to virtually travel around the world. I miss traveling so much right now and this game does provide me with a little bit of comfort. I can't wait until we can go travel again but yeah please um, enjoy beautiful Vancouver. I miss Vancouver so much by the way guys like watching this clip right now I miss Vancouver so much. Okay, so for this round, I am going to have to give the win to the MacBook Pro because, well, the MacBook Air cannot even run CSGO. The MacBook Pro, it can run the Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
not perfectly like it does um, kind of lag and crash at times when it overheats but overall it does let me play the flight simulator pretty well and the flight simulator is probably one of the heaviest games out there like that game's load is actually quite insane so yeah the last round win goes to the macbook pro all right, so we've reached the end. In just a second, I am going to reveal who the winner is. Drum roll, please. Okay. <laughs> the winner is going to be the MacBook Pro. I'm sorry, MacBook Air. It was six to four, so definitely a very solid fight. It was a good game between these two. Okay, so I know this next part is going to sound very cheesy, and motivational but just because the macbook air didn't win this fight doesn't mean that it's a loser it is very much still a winner in its own right and the reason is because this device cost like three thousand dollars more than that and this device cost 999 dollars well plus tax over a thousand but 999. And out of the 10 rounds today, the MacBook Air won four of them, including in the CPU round, the Octane round, which measures web responsiveness, the Xco compile time round, and also the Playing Among Us round. So as you guys can see, the MacBook Air is definitely a very solid laptop. It really isn't like any of the past Airs, in that the past Airs were kind of like, I don't want to say like budget laptops because <laughs> Guys, MacBooks are definitely not budget, but like those, you know, they couldn't really handle any heavy workload. They were really meant for people who didn't really have any heavy workload. But honestly, I think the MacBook Air would be suitable for someone who has a pretty heavy workload, like even a computer science student maybe. If you guys want to check out my review of the MacBook Air specifically for computer science students from a CS student point of view, then um, you can. I will have that video linked below. The MacBook Air is definitely a very solid choice in laptop. Um, it is great. It is very light, pretty, and silent because it has no fan in it. What else? Oh, it is relatively affordable too, so that's great. That will conclude this little fight between these two. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was entertaining and also informational for you guys. And yeah, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below for more tech content. And I guess that's it. So I will see you guys in another one of my videos. Bye!